Hello world, welcome back to another Pico CTF 2022 write-up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the Binary Exploitation Challenge Buffer Overflow 2 for 300 points. Let's get into it. Control the return address and arguments. This time you'll need to control the arguments to the function you return to. Can you get the flag from this program? You can view source here and connect with it using blah blah blah. Alright, so for our convenience, I already have this downloaded course. So why don't we crap it open and take a look. Okay, here we go. So again, here's our gets, right? And here's our typical win function. But this time we have arguments passing in. And if you'll notice down here, it actually checks those arguments. Okay, so if arg1 is e not equal to this, return. So and if arg2 is not equal to that, return. So basically, if we don't pass these checks, we're not going to get to flag printout, which is right here. Keep that in mind. And we're going to go ahead and move over to our Kali box. And as you can see, I already have the Vuln file downloaded. And I also have a dummy flag set up. You remember, because it's reading from a flag file. So again, hopefully if we get the overflow right, a flag will print out for us and then we can just pipe it into the server. Let's go ahead and do our typical GDB on Vuln. All right, and then we'll of course do our usual pattern create, but this time I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and we'll grab that, of course, and then we'll just go ahead and run. Enter our string in and just like Buffer Overflow 1, our EIP register says its segfault happened around there. So if we just do our pattern offset, we'll notice that the offset we need is 112. So we need 112 A. So why don't we go ahead and start formulating that? We'll go ahead and do our from pwn import star. And then A times 112. Awesome. So now we need the win function, of course, right? So we'll just do disassemble win. And there we go. So we'll do P32 address, bam. All right. Now let's go ahead and set a breakpoint at win. And you'll see why I'm doing that here in a second, because we want to make sure that this first part works before we move forward. And so I'm going to do R and then, of course, dollar sign echo. I'm going to grab this. And then we're going to grab this. OK, so this looks exactly like buffer overflow one, doesn't it? So when we run it, notice we have hit our breakpoint and win. So it works. However, if we press continue, it breaks. Does not print out our flag. You'll notice that it's in the EAX register right here, but it's still broke. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have access to our PETA on their system. So even if we were to run this on say their system, we're not necessarily going to get this flag we have to bypass the arguments, like it says. So how do we do that? Well, we need to overflow further, if that makes sense. We need to overflow further in order to get to the arguments because they're right next to it. So, so they shouldn't be too far off, right? It should be just us passing in the win function and then the arguments should follow right after, but we don't know that for sure. Why don't we go ahead and say pattern create and we'll just do 100. And you'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. All right, we'll copy that. We'll go up a couple and we're just going to append that to our already existing exploit. We'll run that and then we'll hit continue. And you'll notice now it's hit our own exploit. So now we can take this and we can do, you know, our usual EIP register value and we can do pattern offset again zero hmm that can't be right well you can also double check if it's correct by doing pattern search and then the value and you'll notice that instead we're overflowing the esp register 
The EIP register isn't always what you need to look out for the overflow. You Sometimes you have to look at the ESP register as well in order to get the right value. So our offset should be four. So really we just need to append four values onto what we already have. So why don't we just do B just to kind of use a different value here to represent different sections. And there we go, four Bs. So now we should be able to just pass in the values of arguments one and two. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We'll copy that. And we'll do our P32. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for this one. Now, if there's multiple arguments, of course, they will follow one after the other when they're passed in. Once you figure out what the spacing is or the offset is between the function call and its argument values that are being passed in. All right, so now we have all the pieces. Why don't we go ahead and run it again? But instead, this time, we'll go back to this one and we'll put in our four Bs, which I don't need to copy and paste that. That's easy enough to type in. Then we're going to grab our cafe food value. And then we're gonna grab our food food value. And then hopefully this will get us our flag. And of course we have a breakpoint there. Probably should have removed it, but we can just hit continue. And there you go. Our flag did print out. Now all that's left to do is run our exploit on the actual server. So we'll just come back up here and grab it. Let's go ahead and just do a clear, make it nice and organized. And we'll grab our server value right here. Paste that in. And there you go. There's our flag. Arguments for days. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Mill. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.